number one Iron Age booty daddy. Hate watching, a style of YouTube commentary that basically got its prominence in the mid 20 teens after many popular IPs basically were given over to the new world religion, that of what most people are calling wokeness. Now, as that has gone on, there have been calls throughout the years to fix what was there, to remedy what was there. And maybe just if our voices are loud enough, these people will about face all of these companies that are destroying the pop culture IPs that we grew up and we love. And maybe, just maybe, with a hope and a prayer and a voice out there, we will finally re-correct, I guess, Hollywood. Well, as that has gone on, that has proven to not necessarily be the case, considering that Hollywood, although minor corrections have been made, uh, that being, you know, Top Gun, Maverick, and a few other films out there that have been relatively decent, but ultimately, the loud voices when it comes to our pop culture IPs and the hate watching really haven't garnered anything other than a lot of monetary success for some of the channels that have done it. Now, in my sphere of the internet, a lot of the channels that I've watched for years have called for better IP and so on and so forth. And then last year, Razorfist actually basically said it. Don't ask to be a part of the culture, become the culture. Now, that call was heard by a lot of people. That call was heard by authors, by comic book creators, by video game developers, by movie creators, all of these people out there already existed. Now, as Razorfist said it, he didn't actually define the movement. He just found a catchy phrase for it because he recognized that it was there. It was something that has been going on for quite a while. See, you know, Comics Gate, they've been doing it in the comic book world for a while. But the Iron Age was something that really galvanized a lot of people together. And they said, yes, this is the thing that we want to go for. We want to create American culture and bring back the American spirit in entertainment, in media, and overall have fantastic storytelling again, whether it's music, movies, or tabletop RPGs, and obviously I've mentioned comics and novels already. One of the things that I've been seeing and why I'm making this video today is because I'm seeing people reach a fever pitch where a lot of these channels who are still covering everything that Disney puts out, still watching everything that Disney puts out, still covering a lot of the Marvel and DC stuff and reacting to it and putting out those videos, a lot of people who are now creating or have been creating for years are starting to step up and say, but hey, wait a minute. All you do is trash on the old stuff, but you're not offering an alternative. Now, before you guys go away, you need to stick around to hear exactly how I'm going to phrase this because I fall somewhere in the middle. So ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. If you guys like what I have to say here, and I think a lot of you will by the end of this, but it's gonna be quite a contentious subject to get into. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell. So as a lot of, I guess, the hate watching has continued in uh, my sphere of the internet, a lot of creators out there are really looking for others to start promoting an alternative, to start promoting something new. Instead of just saying Disney bad because Disney bad, which we knew going into that because they've been bad for years, why don't you offer an alternative to this? I'm seeing it more and more. I'm seeing it more and more in the comments under uh, creators that I've seen. I've, I, I saw a creator today. No, I will not be naming names of any of the large YouTubers because I still love what a lot of them do. I still follow a lot of them. I don't watch all their videos all the time because, well, I'm busy doing my own videos. But I won't be naming them because if I name them, I got to name the small guys that are going after them too because that's only fair. But in the interest of this video, just know I'm seeing some people out there on the larger side of the YouTube sphere that I'm in say that they look forward to other uh, horrible movies coming out because the YouTube algorithm has been really bad this year and boy howdy, they'd make a lot of money by trashing on something terrible again. Now, this is striking a chord with a lot of the smaller creators in the movement wondering, well, wait a minute, 
You don't have to trash on stuff. Couldn't you take that energy and spend it somewhere else? Couldn't you take that energy and actually tell people about something new that you're seeing? Now, I have a few arguments on both sides of this because I do actually look at it on both sides, not because I'm trying to be objective, probably because I drink too much beer and, well, I'm just me. Like, this, I, I'm not trying to do anything objective here. One of the things that I need a lot of people to understand is that a lot of these larger creators out there that have, you know, they, oh, chase the YouTube algorithm. I've seen memes out there. Um, I've seen quite a few memes out there of, you know, oh, new creations over here, but easy money on YouTube, follow the YouTube algorithm, so on and so forth. One of the things that I, uh, that, uh, that popped into my head first off is that as a smaller creator, Okay, is it really worth it to shout out to the upper echelons of people and say, okay, you can comment on this stuff that we know is going to be obviously bad, or you can, you know, actually do something. Good. Is that really beneficial to trying to build what we're trying to build here, to trying to build culture, to trying to tell people, hey, you know that thing that you've been doing for years that not only supports you, supports your family, supports your employees, is it beneficial to tell them to abandon it and do something that will most likely radically decrease their ability to earn an income? You see, obviously, as I have stated before in the past, there are multiple things that play a role here. We do still have the mega corporations putting out stuff that is not good. We do have the nostalgia factor that has been weaponized through the psychological marketing that is done to us and people still want to see those things that they love continue to thrive. And then we also have a thriving new creator sphere because technology has just gotten to the point we don't need to use the legacy forms of getting our stuff out there. All of this is colliding. And I think, honestly, it's going to reach a fever pitch that as mainstream keeps releasing the garbage stuff, you're going to have the channels out there pointing it out, talking about it, making videos off of it, making money off of it. And you're going to have other creators out there walking away from those guys and saying, I can't stand to hear about how bad this thing that we already knew was going to be bad because... We've literally watched it for the last 10 years. This is going to reach a fever pitch, and ultimately, I don't think that the infighting would be any good. So, you say, Royce, well, you're talking about all this stuff. You're talking about offering solutions. You know, the hate watchers out there, a lot of channels that would be considered hate watchers, and, you know, they do it just for the clicks and just for the money. Well, yeah, they have employees, right? And I've already said that. How can you ask somebody to abandon the thing that pays them and pays their employees, right? I mean, it's it's easy to say you could walk away from money for a righteous goal, but how much money are you willing to walk away from? What does that do to those creators? On the other side of it, I do also understand. A lot of the creators that I follow, there's probably no reason that, in, you know, for a five minute section of a live stream, they couldn't shout out a smaller project that they maybe see or that they heard of. However, are they actually hearing about those projects? And then you say, well, if they care about culture and they want to actually build the culture, they should be looking for these projects. Okay, awesome. How much time in their day do they have? You see, you see the back and forth here? Do you, do you see how you can just go back and forth forever on this situation? Obviously, the people out there who started hate watching, at least the people that I watch, and I, I'm using hate watching loosely here, just so everybody knows, right? If you're going to leave a comment and you're going to say, oh, hate watcher, hate blah, blah, blah. No, shut up. You didn't watch the whole video. I will make sure to call you out of my Sunday coffee, okay? But I'm also calling out the people that I know as well. I do not believe it is beneficial to go in to Twitter and to go in other places and comment to these people and say, if you really cared, you would shout out the alternative. Because here's the thing, guys. Up until just very recently, nobody knew there was an alternative out there. Some people may not know the alternative is there. When it comes to the pop culture and the franchises that we grew up with, you've got to understand some of these things mean more to a lot of people than their own families because their own families were garbage growing up. 
some of the old pop culture pulled people out of dark places, right? And so, yes, as adults, they're coming out saying, look, this is messed up. Why is it messed up? Because these were the things that were there for them when nobody else was. Now, that being said, with these projects being absolutely eviscerated, would it be so hard for a creator on the upper echelons in the bigger sphere who has an audience to come out and say, I saw this project, I checked it out, I really like it, and I would like this project to be that light in the dark, the way that the old projects were for me. You see, there's a lot of give and take here. There's a lot of give and take here. It is not worth it in the cultural fight that we are in because pop culture is culture. It's what defines America. It has defined us for a long time. It's why the rest of the world wanted to be us. If we cannot look at some of the hate watchers and go, you know what? I watched you guys for years, but I am now creating my own thing. I have to move on and I'm just going to let the people who enjoy your stuff or come to your stuff, eventually they'll get to a point where they want to see something new too. Just like all of us did. Now, I'm obviously not making a book or a comic or anything. No, I'm dedicating my time to being a fan channel for a lot of these indie creators and for a lot of the people who I think are really trying to recapture what we loved about pop culture. That's my goal here, right? To be that fan channel for everybody out there. And that's a tall order. And it might be too much for me. But that doesn't mean that we have to hate the people that we used to watch simply because we've moved on. That doesn't mean we need to go on Twitter and, and shout at people and tell them, oh, look, you're not doing this thing. And don't get me wrong. There's work on both sides here. But there's no point when all of us see the same thing, that all of us see the cultural decay, and some of us are still out there pointing it out because believe it or not, there's a ton of normies out there and their favorite IP just hasn't been hit yet. Their favorite IP just hasn't been hit yet. And when it does, they'll hit the tailspin that most of us hit going, why, why are the reviews saying that this is a masterpiece? This obviously isn't a masterpiece. And then you find these YouTube channels and they go, hey, guess what? It's not a masterpiece. Here's why it's not a masterpiece. Here's where they failed. And you will have people still moving on from that and going, I need to find something new. Now, I do think that there can be a bridge to, to get people who are tired of what's going on in the mainstream media, who want something new, who are looking for something new, to the people who are creating that new thing. Again, I am talking with film producers. I am talking with game designers. I am talking with all of these people. The question is, how do we bridge those two? Because I know a lot of people out there, you watch the same channels that I did, and yes, it does sound like the same song and dance. But no, it's not bad that they're doing it to make money to feed their families. As a capitalist myself, make your money. Make that video. Provide for yourself. Provide for your employees. You know, become big enough of a YouTube channel that you can offload your editing and offload your thumbnails to someone else. So you have more time to then turn around to then make more money. But this, shouting at people on Twitter, saying that they're, they're not providing a service to anybody because they've been doing it for years, well, what changed? They're doing the content that they've been doing. We just got to a point where we're like, you know what? I've had my fill. It's time to do something else. It's time to build. Do you really think they'd want to reach out if you're shouting at them? about how they're not doing anything different. This monologue turned into something different than I thought it was going to. I actually didn't realize that I would end up in this place. 
But I think you will catch more flies with honey than you will vinegar. And honestly, I think we need to be patient. We're building right now. We're putting out stories. There's a lot of people out there saying that the indie isn't worth it. There's a lot of people out there saying that indie writers are just bad. There's a lot of people out there saying that, oh, this stuff will never get there because, you know, you just don't have the money backing you. We can overcome that. And if we do it and we do it well, guess what? These guys that are hate watching all this other stuff that they built their channels on, they'll reach out to you. Hell, one of these days they might reach out to me. That would be really cool. But at the end of the day, we're all in the same fight. The bad stuff coming out, the IPs that are still getting destroyed, they need people out there as adversity against the mainstream still. They, we need that still. Because if all of a sudden people don't call out the bad and all that's out there is the positive, it will skew the public perception. So they call it out. They tell us it's bad. We build the alternative. But both of us on both sides have to build a bridge to connect with each other. I don't know how to do that. But I know that's what needs to be done. So damn it, if I need to reach out to somebody and say, hey, come on the show, interact with my community, I'll do what I can. Because that's what I can do. But spitting fire at people on Twitter is not the way to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. This has been on my mind for about a week and a half now. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. And if you guys like this, share this with a large creator. Maybe they hate me. Maybe they sit on A Drink With Crazy guy. He's an idiot. Maybe they do. Maybe it's somebody that I agree with that calls me an idiot. Well... I guess you can't win every fight. But until next time, we'll win this fight. And cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my Gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well, so click that link while you're down there. See you next time.